Greetings and welcome to the Halloween edition of the Sliders Review. And I'm here today to talk to you about Spider-Man the Animated Series Duel of the Hunters. This episode was very dark and very tragic for Spider-Man the Animated Series that came out back in the 90s. Spider-Man the Animated Series was created by John Schimper. Um, a lot of people actually don't know that, but he wrote a lot of the episodes and produced and stuff. And he was a black man. <laughs> Nobody knows that. But, um, Spider-Man the Animated Series is my all-time favorite Spider-Man cartoon. It is the one I grew up with, not the first one I watched. The first one I watched was probably one of those ones that came from the 80s. I remember seeing one episode, and that's all I saw. And, but then when this came out, man, it was like the holy grail of Spider-Man back in the day. And it is truly my favorite. It was Spider-Man in college. And, you know, it, it depicted a lot of stuff we knew from the comic books. In fact, by the time they, this episode, Duel of the Hunters, I think it's the eighth episode, it came out in the second season. The second season changed stuff up. No longer were there really episodic episodes. Now there was chapters because... The chapter of this one is the neogenic nightmare. Neogenics was a type of device and radiation that used to create Spider-Man and a lot of the villains. And so every season had a different chapter name. Sins of Father's Past was another one. And this one, like I said, neogenic nightmare. And not only that, but now the episodes are starting to be based off of the comics. Loosely based, strongly based. This one is loosely based from Marvel Fanfare number two. And this introduces Man Spider. It is Peter Parker's one of his worst nightmares. It's when his mutation starts to flare up and it's continuing. And he turns into a, an actual man spider, like a giant spider. And see, what happened was this. Peter Parker always assumed when he got bit that when he gained the powers of the spider, that's all that happened. But his mutation was constantly growing in his body. In the episode prior, in there, The Punisher, this was actually my first time ever seeing The Punisher, like ever. I didn't even know who he was. And so in there, The Punisher, The Punisher is looking for a lost person. And he thinks Spider-Man kidnapped him. Well, Spider-Man is dealing with his mutation. His sides are constantly hurting him. And he don't know why. And But he's in extreme pain. So he goes to a friend of his, Dr. Crawford. And he asks, that she, can she help him reverse whatever it is going on in his like, body and stuff? She does it, but she tells him this thing has not been tested yet. He is enraged because he is getting frustrated with what's going on with him and stuff. And so he takes the vial. He just starts trashing her place and in like a, a panicked state. She gives it to him, but then he apologizes for losing his temper. And so he takes it that night and we now know why his sides are hurting. Next thing you know, you see, this is when he's still in his human form. We see additional arms sprout out from his side. It's like, oh my God. It's a cool visual. <laughs> but it's like, oh my God. So now he's, a, he's now for real an eight-legged spider now. <laughs> so he cut some holes in his costume and he still does his crime fighting thing. And then as he's dealing with the Punisher, who's really getting on his nerves, the Punisher is getting one up on him to the point where his mutation is really acting up in the last episode and to where now he's in so much pain. He rips his mask off and he just transforms into a giant hairy spider with tentacles, multiple eyes, you name it. It's horrifying, it's gruesome, and the Punisher cannot believe it. So in this episode, him and the Punisher are going at it, but the Punisher is no match for Peter's strength because Spider-Man now is probably like five times, like five times more stronger than what he normally is. And Spider-Man's strength is that greater than that of a human, like a hundred times. So he's just tossing him around like a rat doll. He manages to make his escape. The Punisher starts to regroup and figure out how he's going to take Spider-Man down and he's going to permanently take him down because that's what the Punisher does. So he goes back to Michael Trip and tells him he needs to redo all his weapons. It's going to take the whole day, but hey, he has time, you know? 
And so, like, this Spider-Man, now he has organic webbing coming from all of his wrists. And he shoots green acid from his mouth. And not to mention his savage state of wanting to rip things apart. So, while that's going on, Maria, she starts to hear about this giant man spider and fears that it's Spider-Man. So, she calls her boyfriend, Craven the Hunter. He's now a good guy from the first time him and Spider-Man met. And he heads to New York, which he does not like. <laughs> he loves the jungle. He loves to hunt. And so we start to see when Spider-Man is doing the whole man spider thing. He still has some sense of who he is. He recognizes whenever he sees a red a woman, he thinks it's Mary Jane. He heads back to his house. He's looking at his Aunt May. He still knows who he is and he's trying to fix this on his own while still be a savage spider he heads back to the university and he grabs the neogenic uh, recombinator but there is a problem deborah whitman i think that's her name she's there now this is starts the whole relationship between her and flash thompson she's there peter scares her i think she gets attacked by morbius i can't remember i'll get to morbius a little bit later and then so she helps but she gets flash and he's being a jerk and you know he goes in to see what's going on and first he thinks it's just the wind knocking stuff over but then he sees some webbing and thinks something is going on so anyways morbius is in this episode because peter's dna when it was irradiated um it transformed him into a vampire bat so now morbius has the need to feed on plasma now, Morbius is going to show up in live action, and they're going to make him into a stinking anti-hero. I'm not ready for him to be an anti-hero. He needs to be a villain first. I'm sick and tired of all these villains having their own movie and being anti-heroes. So anyway, this Morbius doesn't bite people because he's not allowed in the cartoon. And they're not allowed to say the word blood, so they, they have to say plasma. And he has these suction cups on his hand that absorbs the people's blood and stuff. So he attacks a woman and all this other stuff. His love is Felicia Hardy, a crush of Peter's, but, you know, both men, like, fawned over her. So, at some point in time, we see the Punisher. He's geared up, and he's ready to kill Spider-Man. They clash once again, and in comes Kraven to stop the Punisher from killing Spider-Man. And then, so, the Punisher's like, yo, man, I don't know who you are, but I'll take you down, too. <laughs> Now, this Punisher has a very strong New York accent, and they do bring up clips and images of what happened to his family when they were murdered by the mob. You see, like, the, um, the kite flying in the air, then hit the ground all of a sudden. Now, in the last episode, they actually show a little bit more. So now it's Craven and it's Punisher. They're going at it one-on-one. -on -one. And so, you know, Spider-Man, he gets away. I should say Man-Spider. And so... Craven goes after him while Punisher heads back in his um, van ready to like get some more weapons and stuff. So at some point in time, Craven sees some webbing and then it has something on it. He um, sniffs it down and tracks it down to like a subway area. And when he's there, he sees that Spider-Man has made his like, you know, his nest there. At some point in time later on in the episode, Punisher and Spider-Man go at it again, where he, Spider-Man cocoons him and webbing. And then he takes him back to his like little hideout lair. Cause of course, what does a spider do when it cocoons people? It's going to eat them. <laughs> well, actually it drains their blood, but Craven's there to help. So he frees them and tells them like, man, we gotta like fight on work together and stuff. So they do. But Punisher sees Peter's camera dangling from a web and he touches it, which Craven knows you're not supposed to do that on a spider's nest because certain webs alert them. And in comes Spider-Man ready to kill both of them. So both men, they do their best job as they can to fight him. And in comes Mar uh, Maria Crawford. She comes in with like the antidote and then she gives it to Spider-Man while he's like knocked out from some kind of like electrical thing. And then she gives it to him as he's transforming back into a human. She tells the Punisher put like his coat over his face because, you know, the dude wears a mask for a reason. But the Punisher still has his torn up mask, gives it to him. When Peter's back to normal, 
He looks around, then he sees the Punisher skull, freaks out. <laughs> and Maria tells him, you know, like everything's okay for now, but your mutation's probably gonna flare back up again at some point. But, um, you know, you have to keep retaking like neogenic like radiations to like cool it down and everything. And so he's very thankful to have friends like them to like help him out when he needs help because he's always helping other people. And Craven tells Punisher, you know, the two of them should start working together, which I think is a nod to the comics and stuff. This was an amazing episode. It was a very horrorish type episode. You know, this like stirred up a lot of stuff to when Blaze gonna show up and with the whole Morbius thing, Mary Jane and Harry, um, I think they're gonna start their relationship now because of this, because Peter accidentally pushed them together when he disappeared and turned to the man spider. You know, and then there's the whole Deborah, and there's the whole Flash thing. And it just, it helps set up so many things for future events to happen. And it's so great. Uh, you know, it's one of those things. I, I think this might be on Disney Plus. It should be. Um, I don't know why this has never come out on DVD. Only certain volumes and that's it. Now, wasn't that spooky? All right, well, I shall talk to y'all later. Bye. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. <laughs>